Thanks to Fozzy Audio, I have the ability to give away four of these T20 tube amplifiers to viewers of this channel. Now, while I'm at it, I thought it would be interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison with another small Class D amp that looks very similar to this one, but tends to be a bit more popular. That's the IEMA T9 Pro. So stick with me while I compare the specs on both these units, tell you how to enter the giveaway contest so you could possibly win a T20 for yourself. We'll talk about if there's any major sound differences between these two units. And lastly, I'm gonna give you all the information in my opinion on which I think would be best for you to buy for your system at home. Okay, I can't lie to you guys. I feel like I'm swimming. <laughs> small class D amplifiers. It's like they're just like little rabbits and I just keep making more amps. That's really weird. Okay, <laughs> I really do have a lot of these small class D amplifiers laying around. It all started with me reviewing the IEMA T9, the original version last year. And that led me to then reviewing the Fozzy Audio BT20A which then led me to reviewing the Fozzy Audio TB10D, which I actually don't have right here. I actually see it back there. Um, and, uh, and that, of course, then IEMA released the T9 Pro, so I did a quick review video on that, comparing it to the original model. And now I, uh, I have the pleasure of working on a review for the T20 from Fozzy Audio. Luckily, all of these are nice and small, so they're easy to store around my house. Unlike the multiple CD players I bought to review on this channel last year, I, I gotta figure out what to do with all those. Anyway, let's talk about the Fozzy Audio T20 amplifier. I thought instead of just doing a straight ahead review, I would do a side-by-side -side comparison with the T9 Pro because at the end of the day, they actually look very similar. And when we consumers go online, we're trying to figure out which of these Class D amps to purchase. There are a lot, and sometimes the prices are within close enough range that it just makes it tough to decide which one to buy. Now, while I'm recording this video, the T20 amplifier, I believe, is just under $100, but the retail price is $99.99. The T9 Pro is $169.99, so $170 and $100. Now, these things go on sale all the time, so if you're watching this video and the prices have changed, just note that, like I said, they go on sale all the time. But for this video, I'm gonna stick with the list price, $100.170. So what I wanna do is put both of these side by side. I'm gonna grab my camera, we're gonna get up close, and I'm gonna tell you the specs and how they differ between each unit in the hopes that it will help you decide which model is the best for you. Following that, we'll talk about how to enter in the giveaway contest for this amplifier, and then I'm gonna do a little explanation of what I heard when I listened to both of these side by side for a sound comparison. Let's grab the camera and get up close next. Let's look at these units side by side and just kind of go through the differences both in specs and features. The T20 here has all of the tone controls and volume on the front of the unit. The T9 Pro offers the same tone controls and remote, uh, excuse me, and volume, but that's actually handled a lot more via the remote control, but you can also do that via these buttons here. It's just a little less, you know, kind of in your face right here on the T20. The T20 comes with two 6A tubes, while the T9 Pro has JAN 5725W, so JAN 5725W. W tubes. As you can see, these sit a little bit shorter, or maybe that's the Pro, so it's a little taller than the T20. Um, the amplifier chip inside of the Fozzy T20 is the TPA3116, and the T9 Pro has the TPA3250. So they both have the Texas Instruments uh, digital output amplifier chips. Um, now, the one other item that I wanted to mention I showed just here just a second ago was that the T9 Pro comes with a remote control. The T20 has no remote control. So just keep that in mind um, if you are someone that enjoys having a remote while operating these units. Now, I'm going to turn them both around and explain a few more things that are relevant here. 
Now with both units turned around, you're gonna start seeing some of the major differences here between the T9 Pro and the T20, most of which is connectivity options. Both of these units have one RCA input. Keep in mind, this is not a phono input. Neither of these have phono input. So if you wanna use a turntable with these, it either has to have a built-in phono uh, preamp in the table or you turntable or you will need to purchase an external phono preamp and connect it here. Um, but as you'll note here on the T20, this one RCA input here is uh, really your only sort of physical source that you can connect. Obviously, both of these units have Bluetooth. But with the T9 Pro, there's also coax optical, uh, excuse me, optical and this uh, PC USB. So you're gonna get, uh, and you also have the ability to have an uh, auxiliary out here with the T9 Pro. Um, so just note that the T9 Pro is gonna give you a few more options uh, for connecting sources than the T20. Now, speaking of power, the T20 is rated at 50 watts per channel, but that's at four ohms. So it's more like 25 watts per channel at eight ohms while the T9 Pro is rated at 100 watts at four ohms. So again, that's more like 50 watts uh, per channel at eight ohms. And I don't know about you, but almost all of my speakers um, are rated at eight ohms. So uh, 25 watts here and 50 watts um, here on the T9 Pro. Okay, now that I've shown you the rear of both of these units, let me explain to you how you can enter the giveaway contest to win four of these Fozzie Audio T20s next. Now, Fozzie Audio has graciously agreed to give away four of these T20 amplifiers to four viewers of this channel. It's very easy to enter into this giveaway. All you have to do is click two links, which I will put in the description below. The first link is to Fozzie Audio's Facebook page. All you have to do is click there and like their page. The second goes to their Facebook group, which you will need to click on that link and join their Facebook group. And that's it. You will be entered to uh, win the T20 amplifier. Now, we're not gonna run this contest for forever, so you need to click those links uh, and like their page and join that group by February 25th. All right, now that we've gotten up close and personal with both of these amplifiers and I've explain some of the specs and option differences between the two. Wanted to give you a little idea of the sound difference that I heard between both. Now, to give you an idea of the equipment I was using while listening to these, I uh, hooked, connected these to my new to me Vintage Clips Heresy 1.5, model 1.5 speakers. Now, I just bought these a few weeks ago. I found them on Facebook Market. Got a great deal on them, in my opinion, and I promise that I am not going to let this review rabbit hole into those speakers because I love them. <laughs> I love them so much. Now, I'm gonna put some B-roll up of these speakers. You're gonna see that I'm currently using a textbook as a speaker stand. Don't jump down my back. I actually have proper speaker stands that are being custom made for these on order, but in the meantime, I gotta get them elevated a little bit. So wedge a textbook under there, at least get the sound coming up to my ears rather than to my knees. So don't beat me up too bad on those. I'm gonna make my own video about those speakers because that's how much I love them. I listen to a lot of CDs uh, while uh, playing or while listening to both of these and I use my Cambridge AXC CD player that I bought last year. I actually did a review of that player as well. I'll put a link in the description below in case you're interested in hearing more about it. Now it's worth mentioning, it's a little tricky to properly compare these units because you kind of want to try to match decibels as best as possible, which I used a decibel meter uh, for that. But where it gets a little tricky are the tone controls because when you're talking treble, you're talking bass and you can adjust on both of these units. You want to make sure they're not so far apart that it, you know, um, that it sort of distorts what you think you're hearing at least, right? And the T20 made it easy because I just put the treble and bass at the 12 o'clock position, but the T9 is a little bit, T9 Pro, it's a little bit of a challenge because it's uh, you, you adjust it digitally with the remote. I know you can do other 
ways using the knobs, but I just use the remote control. And if you just put those at the zero position on the T9 Pro, it sounds, it sounds horrible. It really sounds horrible. So I wasn't quite sure, like, how do I get the tone controls on the T9 Pro to sort of match what I would have on the T20? And what I decided was I bumped uh, the T9 Pro treble and bass up to number four, level four on each. So I had both the treble and bass at the same level of four on here. Um, but I, you know, like I said, it's tricky because I can't quite get it like at what I would consider a 12 o'clock position. So if there is sort of like a digital 12 o'clock position on these amps that you're aware of, please let me know because I'd love to get that matched better as I do more of these comparison videos. Now the album I spent the most time listening to while comparing these units was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Songs and Music from the Motion Picture She's the One, released in 1996. Um, this is kind of become one of my favorite Tom Petty albums. People don't talk about it a lot. Um, I still, I was lazy and never took the used $3 price sticker off the front of the case here, but um, probably one of the best $3 I've ever spent. Produced by Rick Rubin, Tom was always very particular about the way his albums sound. So I always find it fun to listen to when trying to compare um, audio components like these. Now, I want to summarize basically the sound difference between these two. And mostly I want to point out that there wasn't a huge sound difference. The T20 comes in at 25 watts at 8 ohms, as I mentioned earlier, and the T9 Pro is at 50 watts. Both supplied plenty of power to the Klipsch speakers. In fact, the T20, you may think, 25 watts, no thank you, that's not enough. I had this at a quarter turn and it was plenty loud. In fact, I had it a little bit louder at one point and um, it, it was just too loud for my small listening room. So I haven't really gone much farther than the, um, than the quarter turn here. So 25 watts from this little unit has been more than enough power. So don't let that, um, you know, don't let that scare you away from this little amp. Honestly, I do not hear a ton of difference between these units. Both offer great detail. You can hear the instrumentation like you think you would. Background vocals sound great. Um, there's a lot of strings on this album, all of which sounded good. On the first song, um, Walls, I think is the song. Let me just double check that. Yep, Walls, Circus. It's parenthetical after that. Anyway, uh, Lindsey Buckingham actually sings in background vocals and the vocals kind of ping around while he's singing. It's kind of got this really cool effect. And that sounded really great on both of these amps. At the end of the day, what I noticed is that the Fozzy Audio or the Fozzy Audio T20 amplifier tended to be a little bit more forward, especially for vocals. So when Tom is singing and I'm listening via the T20, he just feels like he's closer to me in the room, and the instrumentation is a little bit further behind him. Um, the T9 Pro seemed to let Tom sort of drift backwards a bit more into the mix, probably how it was intended to sound a little bit better. And overall, I think it was just more true to the mix of the album where the T20 put uh, the vocals a little bit more forward. Now, did it put them more forward in a way that I didn't like it? Not really. Uh, when I first listened to this before I compared it to the T9 Pro, I was actually really impressed with the way it sounded. It wasn't until I did the side-by-side the -side comparison that I could kind of hear things drift back a little bit more with the T9 Pro. So I think anybody, especially that's new to audio, that would pick up this T20 would be very surprised with A, just how loud the sound can get. You can adjust the bass and treble as you would like. So you can give it more bass, uh, less treble, more treble, uh, less bass if you so uh, choose to do. But there wasn't a massive sound difference between the two, which is something to consider when you're trying to decide between $170 and just $100. Um, you know, if you think I'm getting the T9 Pro because at $170 it has to sound that much better, not necessarily. Now, at this point, it's worth pointing out when I'm talking about the sound of these tube amplifiers that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about how the tubes sound or the difference between how the tubes sound in either of these units. And that's because, to me, to my ears, 
I don't really hear the sound difference due to these tubes. Now, you may be wondering why. Now, my understanding is these tubes are sitting in the preamp stage of these amplifiers, and they're really there to be more applicable to distortion levels rather than provide a tube-like amplified sound. That makes total sense because as we showed earlier uh, while reviewing the specs on these, both of these have Texas Instrument digital chip amplifier outputs. That's what you're hearing. You're hearing more of those digital outputs rather than the tubes. Now, I feel pretty comfortable saying all this about the tubes in these units because I've actually been reviewing and listening to a traditional tube amplifier that I'm hoping to finish a video review on here in the next couple of weeks. And, you know, I went from listening to that amplifier to the T20 and then to the T9 Pro. And there's just such a sound difference when you're listening to a traditional tube amplifier. It's a laid back sound. There's not a lot of punchy bass. And the thing that I think is funny when talking about these Class D tube amplifiers is, you know, you're gonna get a real punchy sound with these. You're getting tone controls that's gonna give you all the bass that you like. And I think if most people bought these for the tubes, then actually ended up buying a traditional tube amplifier, they may actually be disappointed in that tube sound that may not give them sort of that punch and that bass that these are able to provide. Again, the tubes are sitting in the preamp stage on these, not in the output stage. So um, you can disagree with me here. I don't spend a lot of time rolling these tubes or trying to compare them. Um, I think they serve their purpose in the design of the unit, but I don't think that they're giving anyone a traditional tube amplifier sound. So that's why I don't spend a lot of time in these reviews talking about the tubes. So which of these two amplifiers should you buy? Well, I'm not gonna tell you to buy one over the other based solely on sound. They were really that close uh, to my ears. So for me, I think it comes more down to options for your home stereo needs. If you want more connectivity, you're gonna to want to go with the T9 Pro because you're gonna get those digital inputs on top of the RCA. If you definitely have to have a remote control, T9 Pro, T9, as the T20 does not come with a remote. However, if you wanna just get up and running and not spend $170, just 100 bucks, the T20 is, is a great option. You've got your one RCA source. You can be up and running with Bluetooth right away. It's a little less power at 25 watts, but again, I had plenty of volume with this. Like it, it gets loud. Don't let the 25 to 50 watt comparison stress you out. You're gonna get the sound and the volume that you will enjoy out of the T20 for less money. Now I've really enjoyed hanging out with the uh, T20 amplifier here the last couple weeks. I want to thank Fozzy Audio for sending me this for review. Full disclosure, they did send me this amp for free. However, they did not pay me to make this review, nor did they weigh in on my opinions between uh, comparing the T20 and the T9 Pro. Uh, I also want to thank them for being gracious enough to give away four of these units to viewers of my channel. Like I said below, just go down in the description box, click on the two links, one to like their Facebook page, the second to join their Facebook group, and you'll be entered into that giveaway, but be sure to do that before uh, or by February 25th. Now, as I also mentioned earlier, this is not the first Fozzy Audio product that I've reviewed. I also reviewed their TB10D amplifier uh, late last year, and it kind of, kind of had me wondering if these small, all these small, tiny, Class D amps are the future of Hi-Fi. If you wanna watch me review that product and sort of help answer that question, you can do so by clicking on this video here.